Okay, today we're going to take a really brief introduction to antiderivatives and an indefinite integration. All right, we're just going to take those two topics and do a nice brief introduction into those. Um, this video is going to be part one of two. All right, and in the second example, um, we'll go through more examples. All right, but you really do need to have a foundation before you start that. Um, at the beginning of um, our chapter in our textbook where we're starting to deal with integration, um, they use this um, antiderivative word. Okay, um, it's an older word. I introduce it. I will introduce it here, give formal definition. All right, but then later um, in my classes particularly, I usually don't use the word antiderivative or anti uh, differentiation, I, we do the indefinite integration, and that's the words I use. Um, but for formal definition here, um, the definition of an antiderivative is um, a function, capital F, okay, notation is a, means a lot here, the function, a function, capital F, is an antiderivative of little f on an interval i if capital F prime of x is equal to f of x for all x in i or in that interval. Okay, so yes, formal definition might not totally make sense. All right, but basically, you can just get the idea of an antiderivative, okay, by thinking of it as undoing your derivative. All right, and that's a nice little easy way to ease into what it is. All right, so some for some really simple um, examples here. Um, let's say I ended up, um, I've got some function here. And we'll make it a really, really simple function here, like f of x equals, say, 2x. All right. Now, if I want to try to find the antiderivative just by doing a trial and error, think about process, that sort of thing, all right, I need to come up with a capital F, according to this definition, capital F of x, all right, some function that when I took the derivative, I end up with 2x. Okay, so um, thinking power rule, pulling that exponent down in front and then subtracting 1. All right, so I would have had to have an x squared, all right, as my antiderivative, because if I take the derivative here, it would be a 2x, pulling that 2 down in front, subtracting 1 from the exponent. Okay, so kind of you're undoing your derivative. All right, now that, that one's really, really simple. All right, let's say I had another one here. It might be a little bit harder. Um, f of x is equal to maybe, say, an x squared. All right, so what would the antiderivative be? All right, well, if I ended up with a 2 up here, then before I took the derivative, I would have had to have a 3 because we subtract 1. All right, now the question is, if I ended up with a 1 here, what would have had to have been here when I pulled that 3 down to multiply by to get a 1? Well, hopefully you can see that that would have been a 1 third. All right, so there's my antiderivative. Okay, pulling that 3 down, 1 third times 3 would give me the 1. Subtracting 1 from the exponent would give me the 2 there. All right, now this is kind of like a little game and we're just kind of playing and we're thinking it through and it can work. All right, these are really, really simple functions. These are really simple antiderivatives. All of the functions that we deal with are not going to be that simple. Okay, so we are going to have to come up with a general solution. All right, so um, let's take a look at the general solution and then get some more definitions in here. All right, um, so this is... Um, where I want to connect and maybe start calling it an indefinite integration here. All right, anti-differentiation, the act of doing it, is also called an indefinite integration. Okay, so we're going to call it integration. That's the more common word today. I use that on a regular basis. All right, and we will start out with the indefinite ones, um, which just means we're going to have a general solution here. Okay, now, formal definition of this in our textbook is um, the... Um, integral symbol, which is that little shape right there. All right, so I'm going to integrate f of x dx, and that will be equal to capital F of x plus c. All right, now I want to go through and define all of those things, all right, and tell us what we're looking at here, okay? The function that you are integrating, all right, is called your integrand. So that's my integrand. All right, the dx here, this x right here, tells me my variable of integration. All right, so variable of integration. 
because um, functions can be written in terms of y. They can be written in terms of other letters, so I don't always have an x here. All right. Um, this right here is going to be the antiderivative. The antiderivative. of f of x. All right, and then this plus c out here is um, our constant of integration, and it gives us our general solution. So it's a constant of integration. All right, so being able to read it and understand what's going on here is going to kind of really be important. Okay, now, um, like I said, in our textbook, we use capital F here and, and little f here. They do this for your, their formal definition. But I like to show students a little bit something different. We normally do not name our functions with capital letters. All right, I usually don't say, you know, capital F of whatever and then take the derivative of it. We usually use a little f to denote all of our functions. And then when we take the derivative, we do f prime. Okay, so this formula, here, let's just go ahead and put it in red. All right using the notation more commonly that's used at least in my class if we integrate the derivative of x dx then we're going to get back the original function and in our class it would be just plain f of x plus c so using all the lowercase letters and denoting your derivative f prime okay this is what's more commonly used um, in my class and, and it kind of seems to make more sense for the students all right so I just thought I'd point that out. Okay, now we're going to go into and take a look at um, just four basic integration rules. All right, and then we're going to call this quits on part one here. Um, uh, the first basic integration rule that we want to take a look at is if we integrate 0 dx. All right, anytime we integrate 0 dx, we should get a constant. All right, and then stop and think about that. Okay, if I have some random number like 4 or whatever, and then I take the derivative of it, it goes to 0. All right, so that's, that one should be self-explanatory. Okay, now this one, if I integrate some number dx, that's going to integrate to the number and then x plus c. All right, now let's pull out and do some examples of that. So in other words, if I was going to integrate 4 dx, okay, according to this, all right, I would have an answer of 4x plus c. All right, and then ask yourself, stop and think, does this make sense? All right, 4x, if I take the derivative of 4x, I get 4. All right, so then it, it does make sense. Um, all right, third rule here says if I integrate and I've got some number times my function dx, then I can pull that number out in front of the integral sign and then go ahead and continue to integrate like normal. All right, so um, let's kind of look at an example there without actually doing the integration. Let's say maybe I was integrating um, 4 sine x dx, okay? Um, my function right there is sine x. There's my number in front, so I can pull this out in front of the integration sign. So I pull the 4 out in front, and then I've got sine x dx. All right, and then I would continue to um, integrate that and then come up with final answer. All right, and we're not going into that right here in this one because we're just getting some basics for this. All right, um, and then last uh, basic integration rule here basically says if you're integrating um, two functions, all right, and either adding or subtracting, it really doesn't make any difference. Usually they do put square brackets around everything that you are integrating inside here. Okay, especially when you've got pluses and minuses in there. That keeps the dx and the integral sign the se uh, separate. You can take this and break it up. Whoops. You can take it and break it up into two separate integrals. All right, now notice when you do that, you've got the integral of f of x dx. You've got to make sure and put the dx there and then plus or minus whichever you would happen to be doing. And then integrating g of x dx. And the important thing is to make sure that every time you've got that integral sign, you've got to also have the dx or your, your um, variable of integration there indicated for each one of those. 
All right, so um, for this first video, I just wanted to do a really, really brief introduction um, into you know the word antiderivative, antidifferentiation, and some indefinite integration. Um, thanks for watching. If you like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, and be sure to share with your friends. Thanks.